how I found him. You just see a, you just see this dirt hump sticking out of the ground with these stones on it, and same and in front of the the hump with the dirt with the stones on him, there's a large stone. It's not until you dig underneath it, working in excavation, that you figure out that you're dealing with a large scale, highly evolved, highly advanced prehistoric marine reptile called Hallettstonian caesoreas. And that's how I discovered them, like the skulls. Most people would never ever know <clears throat> that these skulls have full and complete sets of teeth, but working in excavation, we're able to dig them up all the time. And you can see them. You pop off the skull, you dig into it with a track hoe, and voila, there you have a full and complete set of teeth. Rights, lefts, tops, bottoms, all replacements, all stellar. Let's see, here's part of the... Uh, the matrix, you can see that the fully mature teeth have a single attachment base. The body spikes have a double attachment base. Everything comes in rights and lefts. And uh, other technologies that we've developed and templates related to the uh, Hallettstonians. The burial, matrix, the burial matrix templates, the crystallization method of preservation, how to identify the remains. This is advanced prehistoric marine biology. The location is high on a bluff in Pleasant View, Utah. Um, they're in a 45-foot band, a strata, and uh, it, they're sitting on a 1,200-foot bluff. And as the bluff erodes, it's five miles long, and then it, it erodes the 1,200 feet down to the valley floor. But everywhere that 45-foot layer is exposed, you can see remains of the Hallettstonian caesoreas. Many different species, because it's a... It's a marine ecosystem, a prehistoric marine ecosystem that features very advanced prehistoric marine biology. And it's just frozen in time. So there's discovery, the graveyards, the excavations, the knowledges, preservations, the reconstructions. Let's see, this is what Hilfeldian looked like when I dug it open. Hilfeldian Caesarea, you get your skull there. There's a complete skull matrix collapse. The collapse is forward and down because the top right teeth are folded backwards, but the bottom teeth generally seem to be fairly well in their original locations. No mouth cavity and a complete skull matrix collapse. But we have fully mature teeth and uh, the jaw goes down 30 feet back to front. So you could definitely hide my car in there. And some of the measurements of the teeth and the measurements on the skull. And then here's the actual measurements of Hilfeldian skull. 123 inches end to end, 60 inches at the back, 48 inches up front. And this is a depiction of the right hand side of the skull. The Stormy Zoria was a 130 footer that I excavated back in 19, or, uh, 2005 up at J. Wadman's in Majestic Heights. And uh, it was a pretty stellar stellar excavation. We did three of them at the same time. We did J. Quattle Caesarea, Stormy Caesarea, and Palestine Caesarea. The skull matrix is all three at a time. And let's see, this is a depiction of, well, the life cycle. You start out, and you grow, and you grow, and you grow, and then you die. And then you become reclaimed. And you must go back from what from that which you came, which is the earth. And you will ultimately be reclaimed back into dirt and stones. It's just part of the life process. It's after death, it's the reclamation process. 